Hey, welcome to today's Daily Dose. This is the second part of a little series on Im being imitators of God and the responsibility we carry as Christians to imitate and represent God in the world. One of the things I've noticed as I'm getting older is how much I speak and say things like my dad. Good things, bad things, not necessarily good or bad things, just things. Even just this morning, I was talking to a group of guys and I said, well, I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised. And that's something that I've heard my dad say before. It just, and, and not necessarily in any like condescending way, but just you end up kind of accidentally talking like your parents. And this is something that I talk about in premarital counseling all the time is that unless you on purpose start to depart from just being like your parents, your default mode slide into uh, the, the home that you experienced in your childhood. And so if you had a great home in your childhood, congratulations, things will generally be easier for you. But if you have a more difficult home in childhood, there's work to do if we don't want to just end up accidentally imitating our childhood home. But I want to particular talk about the way that we speak. How do we imitate God as he speaks? Most of the time we think about saying things like God says, especially in our circle, it ends up being about harsh, difficult, speaking the truth and ends up being about saying hard things. And that's true, that's an aspect of it, but I really wanna highlight here in particular is that we speak like God speaks when we create life. We speak like God speaks when we create life. That the first thing we see about the way that God speaks in Genesis 1 is that God's word creates. It creates, it adds. If anything, this idea, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let the waters be separated, and they were separated. God said, let the earth sprout forth vegetation, and it happened. That God's words create life. And then later on, we see that God blessed them and he commanded them. And this idea of blessing has to do with adding or creating value. You're adding to what is there. And so we need to ask ourselves that there's a lot of aspects to God's speech and God's words. But do our words create life? Do our words add value? Do our words um, create what was not there and cause it to be there? This adding value, this um, creating meaningful culture, this is part of the defining characteristic of God's speech versus other speech. Do your words add life? Do your words add value? Do you create dignity in people? Or do you at least observe dignity in people? Because if our words are tearing or destroying or cursing, then we're missing the central aspect of God's speech, that his speech creates life. Let's imitate him in the way we build one another up.